Hey view devs, welcome back to LearnView. And in today's video, we're gonna be building a super cool infinite scrolling component. And what does that mean? Well, if you've ever caught yourself scrolling on social media like Twitter, TikTok, or Instagram too long, the chances are that site or app was using infinite scrolling, which is when new content is loaded as someone scrolls down a page, as opposed to separating it out using pagination. And these are highly effective, especially when dealing with user-generated content, because it creates a nice little type of news feed that you can see. And why is this effective for this type of content? Well, there are several pros and cons of infinite scrolling, and I'll leave a link to a great article down below, but I'll sum up some of the main points. It's great for user engagement and content discovery, because like you and I do, a lot of people can get caught scrolling and just seeing whatever pops up on their phone. And in general, scrolling is better than clicking for usability, and also works great for mobile devices. And some of the cons is that users can't bookmark a certain page and retain their position, so it makes it hard for search and location. There can also be some performance and resource issues if it's not implemented properly. Like all things with web development, there are valid reasons for either choosing infinite scrolling or not. Just make sure to really think about which is best for your site. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about infinite scrolling, let's actually go ahead and build our app. So from a high level, there's gonna be three different parts. One, a mock API that generates posts. And for us, we're just gonna create random posts. Two, a post component that renders each individual post. And then three, a list component that contains all of our post components and handles loading in new posts from our mock API call. Let's tackle these in order. So first to mock our API call, we're just gonna create a function called getPosts that takes in a number of posts that we wanna generate. In a real setting, this would connect to a database that would actually get real generated content. But for now, so we can focus on the view side of things, we're just gonna generate some data. Let's create a return array. And then for however many posts we want, we'll create a new post where we'll randomly select one of the authors up here and then give it some lorem ipsum text as a placeholder. And then let's return this array. Next, we have to actually make our post component. There's not really anything fancy about this code. We just have to take in a post using a component's props and then render the author and the content of that post. And there's also a few styles here to pretty things up a little bit. Once again, to stay focused on view, I'm not gonna go into detail on the styles, but I will cut to them here. And if you want the full code, as always, it's down in the description below. Finally, let's figure out how to display some posts on the screen. And this is where our list component.view comes in handy. So first, let's import a few things. Our API call, our post component, a ref for creating reactive data, and then an on-mounted and then on unmounted lifecycle hooks. Then we can create our export default and setup function and create a reactive posts variable that calls our get posts API call. And don't forget to return it from setup so the rest of our component can access it. Finally, to display our data inside of our template, we want to run a v4 loop that iterates over our posts and renders a post component for each item. Our template should look like this. And a great thing to point out here is that on our scrolling component div, we have a ref so that we can access it inside of our script. Let's go look at what we have in our browser. So right now our current page should be rendering 10 posts, but if we scroll to the bottom, nothing happens. So let's move on to the exciting part of this video, infinite scrolling. So essentially, when we reach the bottom of the posts, we want to start loading in more data. Let's start off by creating a method that loads in 10 posts at a time and appends them to our post variable. We'll call it load more posts, it gets posts, and then appends it to our posts ref. All we need now is a way to trigger this method. We're going to do this by adding an event listener that listens for the scroll event and calls a method that we're going to add when the component is mounted and remove when the component is unmounted or destroyed. Great. Now we're all set up to start loading in more posts. If you remember from the previous section, I pointed out that we added a ref attribute to our list component element. And if you've worked with template refs in view before, this gives us a way to access our HTML elements in our script. And in the composition API, we can just declare that ref like this, where we say const scroll component ref null, and then return it from setup. With this access to our scroll component, we can finish up our handle scroll method to determine if we're scrolled to the bottom of our content. So inside handle scroll, let's first get our element, and then we'll check if the bottom of the element is within the current height of the window, meaning that we've reached the bottom. And if it is, we can just call load more posts. And that's it. If we go back to our browser and scroll down to the bottom of our current posts, new posts will automatically load in. Perfect. So this is just an introduction to creating a view three infinite scrolling component. There's so many ways that you can improve this. Here are some ideas that I would think about adding if you're trying to build this into a real system. First, since in a real system, you'd be making API calls to get this data, Try adding a loading spinner that displays while new data is being loaded. And then also you can add a lot more data to each post like pictures, dates, and things like that, and just find new ways to display it. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I hope this tutorial was helpful and showed you how to listen to scroll events in view. 
and a great application of that feature by creating an infinite scrolling component. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more view content. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!